My name is Dre Dean Utsi. I'm from Florida. Um, I have three boys and two step boys, so a total of five boys. <laughs> he was arrested for doing something stupid like He was persuaded by one of his friends, girlfriend or whatever you want to call it, to go inside her house. And I guess she was upset with her dad, so she told him that he can, him and his brother can have anything that they wanted. She left her window open. Him and his brother went inside and came out with four guns. And they moved the guns from one house to another house hit him in a garage or some type of um, storage. And then I got a call from the school saying that he was being arrested for burglary with a firearm. He was arrested, I wanna say it was a day after Valentine's Day. Um, they took him to the juvenile court system. He was there for exactly 21 days. He was supposed to be released on the 21st day. Instead of being released, he was direct filed and took to the adult jail system where he was congratulated by the, I think, bailsman or the person that's at the court who holds them until they go to court. He never made it to court. They were late bringing him from the juvenile detention center center. Um, court lasted approximately five minutes where I found out that he was being direct filed. So after that, I had to get a lawyer because public defender, it would take like 60 to 90 days before they would even be available to take his case. I was calling the jail trying to see him for visitation, but the only way that you can visit them is if they add you to the visitation list. He's a kid. He didn't know that he had to add me to the visitation list. So I went to reaching out to different organizations trying to figure out how do I see my son and what do I have to do because I knew nothing about the process. And they basically told me that my son would have to put me on, there, on the list. I begged for them to tell my son that he would have to put me on the list and they basically said, he's a smart kid, he'll figure it out. Yeah, so I knew right then that something had to change. I had to do something differently to help other kids avoid the situation. So I went to contact in the DOJ's head in Tallahassee, who was giving me a little bit more information on what I can do, you know, the do's and don'ts. Told me that they were supposed to supply my son with a um, pamphlet that would tell him, you know, what he could do, what he, you know, couldn't do. I talked to my son, they never provided it, of course not. So I basically Googled one for that particular jail and went to tell my son, you know, everything that he could do and what was allowed. I went and visited him to find out that he wasn't able to call me anymore because in the jail system you have to set up a phone account, you have to pay for them to be able to call you. So it's basically like a money maker. Big business is, is what it's all about. So I set up this account. I had to keep money on it just to speak with him. And then all of a sudden his PIN number wouldn't work for him to make calls. I was like, you know, not sure of what I could do. So then I started researching more on this direct file situation and just, you know, all of their rights while they're in adult jail. They're not supposed to be in contact or even see adults. Well, when I visited him, adults walked by all the time. So they were in contact with adults, which was like violating their policies that they put in place. So I knew right then that it was something that had to be changed. My son does not receive any services except for they have some type of probation officer. He was supposed to attend school while he was in there. They don't, they don't have schools for these kids inside there. They're not prepared for these kids. They don't have training for kids in the adult jail. 
They're only prepared for adult situations. That's it. He's basically learning that that's not a place for kids. That's nowhere that he wants to go. He tells all his friends, you know, stay out of trouble. He volunteers at the church. He's doing different things just to try and, you know, keep himself busy. He has a job as far as, I guess, working in the kitchen or something like that, trying to just stay positive. That's all he can do. He reads his Bible to keep his spirits up, you know, and stay motivated about everything. Because no matter what you do, it's really up to your kids to make the right choice. And you would think, you know, teaching them the right things. I took him to church like all the time. I never would have thought I would have got a phone call stating that my son had been incarcerated. But I would tell the parents, no matter what, do not stop the fight. They can make a change. Contact the policymakers, contact the senators, contact the governor, whoever will listen. You know, let them know this is not right to have our kids incarcerated with adults. It's just not right. I just want to say thank you to all the people who are supporting the kids that are in jails. Thank you to everyone that are actually fighting for kids not to be incarcerated with adults. I want to say thank you to all the organizations such as the Campaign for Youth Justice, who are putting the word out there and giving people resources and help, letting them know what they can do as far as fighting for their kids.